Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to the next episode in the series here. We're just getting started with our uh, project that we called Senya. That's going to be a little travel slash attraction uh, application, a little informative application about specifically uh, Croatia and some of its some of its beauty. So if you've missed any of the season so far, please go ahead and get caught up to speed. There hasn't been too much covered at the moment, but we are going to add our nav host fragment via the XML. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just copy this entire thing. And we're just going to paste it right here. And we're good. So this is the special component, the fragment container view that um, ties in very nicely to this nav graph that we're going to uh, create and is essentially a way to communicate to the system this kind of a navigation, more of a visual navigation, visual representation of your um, of your application, of the different screens you can get to, how you can get to them, and then maybe some interesting data along the way. Uh, so you can see here it's actually kind of freaking out because as part of the um, the attributes that we need to set, we need to basically set a nav graph that we've defined to this container view that exists um, at the activity level. So we can get, get a reference to that and then we can basically uh, give it commands to navigate from one screen to the next um, from all the fragments that are going to be a part of this main activity. So um, I think other than that, uh, you know, this is the name of the class that that Google has created uh, alongside part of this library. I'm just going to change this uh, to the camel case because I like it most. Um, default, yeah, all this stuff is pretty straightforward here. Width and height are set to zero, and we have our constraints basically, um, you know, bottom to bottom, top to top, left to left, and right to right of for the uh, constraints in the parent. So we're telling this fragment container view to take up the entire screen that the activity has to offer and then our fragments are going to be swapped in and out of this particular view um, so then our fragments will have the entire screen that basically the activity has. So um, if you understand I guess this kind of uh, resource uh, structure if you will we're referencing at navigation so that actually means that inside our main resource folder. Um, we're trying to reference uh, an, an, a file named navgraph inside of the navigation folder. And as you can see here, the navigation folder does not exist. So we're actually going to go ahead and create that. Uh, create an Android resource directory. Uh, is navigation? No. Yeah, okay. So we're just going to change the resource type here to be navigation and click OK. And it actually just creates that for us. And then we're going to say new navigation resource file, and we're just going to call it navgraph. Again, since we have our project set up with Git, uh, this is the first time we've added a file to it, and Git is asking us if, they, if, they, if we want it to track it for us. So we're going to actually click remember, do not ask again, and add, uh, because we're going to want Git to track all the files that we add to this project. So um, as you can see here, we now have no errors, and so we're ready to go inside our nav graph. Now I kind of like doing uh, the split here, um, mainly because it's just what I'm most familiar with, but we can possibly get into maybe, maybe doing things in the design first, because it's going to be a relatively simple application, so we're going to... Um, we're not going to have too much of, of trouble like with a ridiculous number of screens or something like that. So. We are going to, let me think for a second how I would just want to structure the directories here. So I've gone ahead here and restructured things a little bit here. Uh, within our com DMP Senya package, we, we used to just have the main activity, but we've kind of restructured that so that there is a, uh, a package here that says UI, and then within that there are there's another package fragment where all of our fragments are going to live, and then we actually have our activity in there. And then we've created a little data package here um, just because it's going to 
you know, hold the, the tools that we need to uh, translate the JSON file that we added in the last episode to, uh, you know, something that we can deal with in an object-oriented sense. So we'll get to that in a little bit, but um, for now we actually need to do the majority of our work within fragments. So that's kind of why I wanted to just restructure some things. And so we're just going to create a home fragment, which if you've seen the, um, the previous uh, season, season two maybe it was, um, we had a, a, a UI, it might actually still be up. Yeah, we had a UI here that kind of was, you know, a, a list of items. So we're actually going to go ahead and do something similar to that. Uh, change the UI around a little bit, but uh, it's going to be along the same lines. So we're going to uh, declare our first fragment here. And actually, we're also going to now add this fragment to our nav graph. So we needed the fragment created first so that we can add it. Um, as a destination so we can go ahead and click this little uh, plus symbol and add our uh, home fragment here so just trying to get acclimated here okay interesting so you can wow very interesting okay sorry I've never seen or I haven't worked with this UI here before so um, uh, I, used to, I just do things in the split view, but this is very nice. Um, so I, I do just want to cover things in the split view for a second here, just because I want to show you basically what this actually means and how this is uh, going to work here. But within this XML file that is a navigation resource file, you can define fragments. Uh, and these are basically going to act as the nodes in the graph that we saw in some of the other uh, pictures online here, these little guys, and then you can define actions from one destination to another, and you can think of those as like the edges between the between the nodes in the graph. So we need to give our fragment tag or a fragment uh, element here an ID, so something meaningful obviously can't clash with anything else. So we need the home fragment. The name of this fragment has to be the class that you're actually trying to reference. So if you command uh, and hover over it or command click it'll actually bring you to this file so now there's this understanding that this fragment element here is um, actually under the hood translating to this file here and and this is going to be the fragment that is going to be loaded in um, by default because of this attribute right here the start destination so that's basically how you're able to um, tell tell the system which uh, which fragment you want to load. So we're going to come into the home fragment. It's going to have a list of items. We're going to be able to click on one of those items and go to kind of like a detailed view and then maybe, you know, another two screens or something like that from there. Um, the label attribute here we'll get into in a little bit, but it actually allows you to, um, it, it's going to be basically the title in the toolbar that this whole description here uh, of how you're, defining this element, this, the library and the system is just going to uh, mold that all into uh, a, a cohesive experience for you, as in there's going to be a little bit less boilerplate code that you're going to have to write by just filling out this particular uh, attribute as well. So uh, without further ado, we also need a layout, as you know, for what on earth is that? I do not know. I'm sorry about that. Uh, we actually need a, uh, a layout for our home fragment. So we can say fragment home. And within here, we're actually just going to pop a recycler view here. Um, so we're going to do recycler view, and we're going to do everything match match. And we're going to call this recycler view. Uh, orientation vertical we need a layout manager here which is going to be a linear layout manager and then let's do a little padding at the bottom to keep our items off the so we know when we've reached the bottom and for now that's all I can think about here um, so that is all good and dandy but the reason I wanted to do that outside of the fact that we need the, the layout file is you can actually add that information here 
So I'm, I'm just going to put this up here. But uh, I believe, yeah, you can just say layout and then fragment home. So now this is where it's all starting to come together, where you can see here, oh, you get a little preview of what the actual screen is going to look like. And that's from this tools layout attribute that you can set on this fragment element. So you can actually see here that this, um, you know, this, this, this fragment that's here starts to have the look of whatever we've defined in this layout. Uh, you know, so if we were to add a button somewhere here, we would see the button in this little preview here. So it's kind of nice. Um, and then I think the next thing that I want to do here as well is just go ahead and create some of these, um, the stubs here because we want to fill out the nav graph a little bit here. So we're going to call this a, well, let's call this something we know. Uh, we're going to call it the attraction fragment or let's say a Attraction detail fragment. That's not bad. We're going to have this extend fragment as well. And then uh, yeah, let's create the resource for it or the, the layout for it as well. Fragment attraction detail. Split and for now, let's just put a button here. I'm just going to say wrap, wrap. No, that's not wrap. ID button, I don't need panel. Okay, so we've just plopped a button in the middle of the screen here. Uh, I just wanna, you know, do this to kind of show you how things are gonna look. Um, so fragment, we will give it an ID, and we're going to say ID, uh, uh, attraction detail fragment. Uh, the name is going to be the attraction detail fragment. Our label is going to say attraction details. And the layout is going to be the attraction detail. Okay, so you can kind of see how this is uh, coming out. And these, these things are, are movable here. So you can kind of put them wherever you want on the screen and actually, uh, you know, I don't know help display how you're going to move from one to the other. So actually you can see here there's like this little, I don't know, handle that you can grab. And so basically when they click an element in this home fragment, we're going to bring them into the detail fragment. Uh, so we can actually depict that by holding that little handle and dragging it to a new fragment. That's actually going to create this in the UI and create what we know or what we call an action. Now you can obviously do this uh, in code here if you want, or it actually looks like uh, you know, in here, the attract the action, you can fill out this little, um, oh yeah, wow, do it here uh, in, in this nice little UI that pops up, uh, and, and you'll basically get the same result here. So um, you can see that now we're giving an action to this home fragment. It comes up with this very straightforward pattern where it says action underscore the name of this fragment, underscore to underscore the name of the destination. Um, so it's a good naming convention to get it get used to. I would highly recommend it if you're going to be creating this uh, by just typing it in. And then you give it an ID so that we can reference this ID uh, very easily or, or this action very easily in a unique manner. And then the destination is the attraction detail fragment, which is this guy here. So you can see now how things are starting to come together as far as, okay, we navigate from this screen to this screen via this action. And very quickly, we are going to define an argument, which actually, I wanna see how to do it in this because I've never done it before, so we're learning something new. So I click on this guy, I want to give it an argument. So we're gonna add an argument. We're going to name this argument the attraction ID, right? Because 
when they click an element here, we're going to pass the ID that they clicked into this fragment so that this fragment can fetch all the details and data associated with this particular attraction. Um, we have that defined in our data, uh, our JSON file as a string. We are not going to allow this to be nullable and our default value, I guess, is just an empty string, so nothing. So we're going to click add and I want to go back here and see what it looks like. Yeah, okay. So you can see here, there within a fragment uh, element, there is another element that you can put um, argument, action, there's another one, deep link, that we'll get into in the future. Uh, and so now we're basically saying that this is a particular, this is the name of the argument that we're going to pass, and the element is of type string. So um, we're going to go ahead and build this really quickly. And then I want to uh, show you a little file if I can, because we've modified this, we've created this in code here, and that's all good and great. But until we actually build the project, the code, the IDE, the system doesn't know about this information. So actually what's happening is we've defined this schema, this structure, this skeleton of how to navigate or how sc screens are going to communicate to one another or the fact that this screen requires a particular argument of a certain type. Well, when we end up building the project, what happens under the hood is that the application or sorry, the, the build system will actually generate files for us that encapsulate all of this information here um, in a manner that we're able to use. All right. It seems that the files that I was looking for are not created yet. Uh, it might need to it might just need to make a little bit more progress here and connect some more things um, and make a little bit more progress just in general uh, to get it to where I want. But uh, anyway, the video is getting a little longer here, so um, I kind of just want to cut it here. We will actually go ahead and um, maybe start to uh, just fill out a little bit more of this information here, maybe follow the tutorial a little bit more on um, how to actually get the activity up and running, and then we'll, uh, we'll just, we'll start to dive into it. So I will catch it in the next one. Thanks for tuning in.